Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for W plus nine. Today we're going to be talking about kind of stretching or altering your stamps to um, get a little bit more out of what you already own. So I'm using um, these two. They're both part of the crew series, the school days and the gardening club. I'm not going to be using them for school or the gardening club either way, um, but I, I'm going to be using them to create like a cute little friend coffee card. So I picked two of the girls and I actually already stamped them um, on the masking paper with their little coffee cups because um, this is going to make it a little bit easier for me to get the placement right on my card. So with those masks in place, I'm going to use them to place my girls um, in the Misty and then I'm going to use um, Copic Safe ink. There's a couple of different ones out there. Lately, I've been using the um, Gina K Amalgam. Um, and I'm really liking that. So I'm going to remove those masks and then ink these up. When I do, um, cause I'm being lazy, <laughs> basically is what it comes down to. So I could stamp the coffee cups first and then mask those and then stamp the girls. Instead, I'm going to ink the girls up and then just wipe the wink, the wink, what? Wipe the ink off of their hands before I stamp them. So I can put the coffee cups in those places. Now, the little girl on the right-hand side of the card, I wiped away a little bit too much of her hand, um, basically her entire arm. Um, so this time, instead of using a baby wipe, I'm just gonna use my finger to wipe away just a portion of it. Uh, that seemed to be more precise for me. And then I'm gonna use those same masks before to make sure that I get my coffee cup back in the same spot so that the masks will fit them don't mind my head I kind of had to get like a right on top of them to make sure that they were in the right spot and then um here you saw me like using my finger to pick them up I have on dark nail polish I have on dark red nail polish I would not recommend using your fingernail if you're wearing dark colored nail polish to pick up your masks because it can leave like streaks of color on your card Thankfully, I got out of that one unscathed, um, but from here on out, I'll be using like the tip of my scissors to pick up my masks so I don't have an error like that. Um, it's hard for me though, because I'm used to just being able to use my fingernails to do it, uh, and I have paid for it in the past, honestly. Um, so you wanna make sure you remember to move your mask too. I almost forgot to do that before I stamped the other coffee cup. So. We're going to have two different cards here. You probably saw that um, at the beginning of the video if you're watching on YouTube or if you're checking this out on the blog. Um, there are two different cards because I'm a huge proponent of using what you have. Nothing's changed here. I'm still the same cheap card maker that I was when I first started. Um, and so I like being able to stretch my images. Also, it pushes me creatively to kind of see things differently. So for this card, I'm doing just a very soft um, shaded lilac background in order to kind of bolster up the interest i am using a number two round brush to just flick on some clean water and then i'm using the w plus nine shimmer spray i just shook it up and then took out the nozzle and then like sprayed that on the background um after it was uh dry i went ahead and removed the masks and then i'm going to get into the copa coloring so this like I said, this card is just pretty straightforward, like as the images as they are, which is totally adorable. But because it is December, um, I wanted to do, well, ultimately, honestly, I, I wanted to do this huge scene with these girls. And um, I knew I wasn't really going to have a ton of time to do that. So I decided that I would just alter what they were wearing to kind of make more sense for a snow scene. Um, and then I decided that I did have time, <laughs> that I did have time to do the full scene. So um, as you're watching this, I'm going to show you the first card, what we're doing here. And then I'm going to show you the second one with where their clothes are modified. And then if you um, want to hop over to my channel, um, then I will have the full blown scene as I originally saw it um, on that channel. So anyway, back to the coloring. Um, I'm using the same um, combination for both of the girls. There's gonna be shading around their faces where their hair is coming down, where their arms are close to their body, underneath their necks, um, where their dresses come down on their legs, there will be shading and then underneath their little um, kneecaps. And usually I add shading like on their the inside of their legs because they'd be closer together and it would kind of cast a shadow. 
This particular color combination does look dark when it first goes on, um, especially in my videos because I always start with the skin tone first. Um, but I promise you by the time all is said and done, it will not look quite so crazy. It will look a little bit more natural. So speaking of stretching your stamps, um, something I wanted to talk about. I recently saw a video um, by the frugal crafter, Lindsay, who is extremely talented. Um, she does lots of, she used to do lives. I think she's decided she's not doing those anymore or only for special occasions, but she is um, a very talented crafter. And she had just recently put out this video that I saw um, talking about things that irked her in the card making community, um, which made me giggle because I would totally use that word. Um, but one of the big things was um, not shopping your stash and not using what you have. And since I had already made this video before I saw her video, um, I thought that it would be... Um, I thought it would be a good time to talk about it, honestly. Because a lot of the comments, and honestly, it kind of breaks my heart. Um, a lot of the comments, people felt like they couldn't watch YouTube videos anymore because people were always pushing the newest product or that it was some sort of cash grab or they felt like infomercials. Um, and that, it just makes me really sad because um, there's so many of us um, that do YouTube videos because we want to teach you something, uh, because we want to share our love of this particular art with you. Um, cause for a lot of us and myself included, I think I have one friend locally that I can get together and kind of craft with. Um, but most people in my life don't understand what I do. Um, most people in my life, you know, I, you've heard me say this before, talk about, um, oh, you make cards like Hallmark? No, I don't make cards like Hallmark. Hallmark mass produces cards that take approximately 20 minutes to print off of a printer. I don't make cards like Hallmark. I make cards that require skill and thought and effort for the people that I love in my life. And while I, self-admittedly, um, am terrible about mailing them out, the people who are close to me or live um, near me, when they get their birthday gift, when they get their, you know, Christmas gift, whatever, they, they do get a card from me. Um, I wish I was better about mailing them to crafty friends. I'm not. Um, flawed, not perfect. I'm not, I'm just not perfect. Um, but anyway, they, it's, it just makes me, um, it makes me sad that that's how our community or some members of our community feel that it's not about the learning. It's not about the process. It's not about sharing that joy, um, that it's about consumerism and, um, the consumption of the newest, trendiest thing, um, if you look, if you have watched any of my past videos, uh, you know that um, I got some really great advice early on. Um, well, wasn't that early. I'd been card making for a while when I met Weta. Um, but probably about, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago, she gave me this wonderful piece of advice, which was find something that you love and do it well because I was kind of all over the place, like trying the trends and the newest thing. And not that I don't still like experimenting, I do. Um, but for the most part, my card style has stayed the same. And there are stamp sets that I own that I go back to time and again, because, you know, they're forever. They're an investment, but you can use them 100 million times. Like, that's the point, guys. That's why you buy a, a stamp set, um, so that it, 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 because it's something that you love and something that you'll use. And I am just as guilty as everybody else of, um, you know, shopping and then having things that I don't get to use um, right away. And I don't feel like that's because I'm over shopping. I just feel like that's because my life is so busy. Um, and But I wouldn't want to encourage you, I guess, to buy the newest, greatest thing. Um, buy the things that make your heart happy. Do that. That That's a good plan. Um, 
real quick note on the coloring here. So I'm going to do both of the girls' dresses the same way. And um, because they are, I guess this is me altering the stamp set, but only with my coloring. I wanted to give them pleats. I wanted to give their dresses a little bit of movement. So that's what you see me doing at the bottom with these crazy looking triangles. Um, by the time all is said and done and we have shaded it completely out, it will look like her dress has some um, individual movement and there are, you know, peaks and valleys because of those shadows and it'll just make it overall look more interesting. Uh, if you have not ever tried that, I would encourage you to do so. It's something that um, is relatively easy to add a little bit more interest to your people's outfits. Um, so just make sure that you don't, um, when you're doing it, you want to make sure that you leave that highlight. That highlight area is what kind of brings everything all together. And I'm using reds here, um, and reds can be, well, the color the color combination that I use can be a little bit difficult to blend. The green comes together much easier, which you'll see on the next um, little girl's dress. But anyway, back to this whole, um, this whole shopping thing. I know that, um, you know, sometimes the market gets oversaturated and it seems like everybody is using different things. But you also have to understand that from our point of view is we don't mean for you to buy all of the things. We are, we as like YouTubers, is that the correct term? I don't even know, um, are just sharing with you the things that we love. And if you love them, then great. And if you just learn a technique and maybe the stamp isn't your style, also totally okay. I want you to take away something um, that is useful to you. And so if you have other, you know, stamp sets that fit the bill, use those. Use them. Um, because I do. I mean, there, I can't remember who's, there's like a teacup set. I think it's maybe... Well, no, well, we'll, we'll use the, the W plus nine one that just came out, the, the cookies and, and cocoa one. Um, Dawn doesn't have a mug set and I love mugs. I love mugs. You guys know that if you, you know, watch my blog, my YouTube channel, whatever. I love mugs. I love how customizable they are. None of the mugs look the same. Um, I'm going to have a mug card coming up here, um, shortly. That's a, a different mug set. That's just something that I really love, but I will use them multiple times like multiple, multiple, multiple times. So much because of my love of coffee that you guys will just be sick to death of the mugs. But um, I'm cool with it because I totally love them. But maybe your thing is, I know like Lindsay said in her video, her thing was like vintage typewriters. The vintage movement, let me tell you people, was not my bag. It just was not for me. Not that I couldn't appreciate someone else's art and learn something from the videos that they did with those items, whether it's a, um, a technique or a color combination or what have you. Um, but I was not buying vintage typewriters. It just is not my style. Um, so whatever your style is, uh, whatever the things are that you're into, do those things. Don't feel like you got to do everybody else's thing. Those are those other people's thing. You do you. Um, so back to the, the coloring of the card, um, these little boots, which I think are totally adorable, they are part of the, um, the school days one and they have these cute little, cause like the whole, like kind of the theme of the set is like the nerds thing. And so they have like these cute little eyeballs on them, which are adorable, but was not what I was going for in this card. So I'm going to cover it up with my coloring. I'm going to give her little black boots to go with her little t-shirt dress and um, because the stamping is black, now I could have wiped them off like I did their hands. That's true. I could have done that. I opted not to um, because I knew I was going to do her boots black and I could just cover it up with the, the coloring. So all I did was move her highlight up on her boots a little bit. Um, so you can see like just a little bit above her ankle, I'm drawing like a darker line. Um, and then that's going to mask those things and then still have the highlight and it's still going to make sense. Also, let me apologize for sometimes um, when I'm moving the card around, there might be like this little blurry spot. I didn't notice it, probably because I don't watch my videos while I'm making the videos. Do you know what I mean? I watch them after the fact. And I did this one right after another one. And kindly, one of you guys pointed out to me that you thought there was something on my camera lens. I am pretty sure it is a fingerprint. Um, not my own fingerprint, my child's fingerprint. 
So my little camera set up here is basically my camera mounted on a, it's like PVC pipe. Um, because the, first of all, when I started doing this, I couldn't afford um, one of the more expensive stands. I don't know if I could now. I stopped looking into it because this works perfectly fine for me. Um, and actually, Nathan's father built it for me, which was very kind of him. Um, so it's mounted on this PVC pipe and it sits, it sits on my desktop. It doesn't stand on the floor. I don't have floor space for it. Um, I'm just adding some shadow underneath their little feet to ground them so they're not just like floating in midair. Um, but anyway, so Peanut was making his own card and when Peanut makes a card, he likes to turn the camera on because he thinks that that's, um, you know, he's making a card like mommy and that just you know, melts my little heart. Um, but anyway, so sometimes when he's playing with the camera, he likes to zoom it in and out and all these things and he, um, bumps it. I'm not kidding you. Last week, no less than three times did this camera fall, um, nearly on top of this child. I think one time it actually did fall on top of the child, um, but he made it out unscathed. But anywho, so I'm sure in the picking up and the zooming and the unzooming and the unzooming, the zooming out, um, there probably did get a fingerprint on it. So I will clean it today. Um, and now we're moving on to card number two. So here's the first one and it's got the, the big, um, grateful for you, which I'm going to be honest with you. If I didn't plan on doing a scene with the second one, I would have done the same type of sentiment. I would have done a larger sentiment in the top left-hand corner. Uh, I'm picking Molly hair off of my masks. Molly's my dog. She sheds a lot. Um, and then sometimes if like the mask ends up on the desk or whatever. Sometimes there's Molly here. Speaking of masks. So for this one, I wanted to do a little bit more of a scene. So on this eclipse masking paper, I just loosely sketched some hills and then I'm cutting that into three pieces. So the one at the top is going to mask my sky. The one in the middle is going to stamp a hill, a large hill in the background. And then the one up front is going to mask a, um, a smaller hill. So you need all three pieces though to do this, especially if you're going to do like a night sky. Um, you want to definitely be able to um, mask that off so that you're not risking getting any of the blue or whatever on your perfectly white snowy hills. You know what I'm saying? So here I'm using Salty Ocean just to give a little bit of color to my sky. Really the entire purpose of this is to make that white edge of my hill pop forward going to put that mask back in place and remove the one in the middle. Be careful. Masking paper sticks to masking paper. So you can see like kind of my girls are kind of coming up a little bit. It wasn't a huge deal because they were, um, they're all one mask, but I've had it in the past where I've had multiple smaller masks. And like when I go to remove the other one, I pick up like a little teeny tiny mask and um, I don't really realize it. When you're doing the hills, you want to make sure you're just sticking to the bottom portion of the hill because you're just adding the shadow. The object is white. The, the snowy hill is white. So putting in the shadows with the distress ink, um, you are you're just want to keep that toward the bottom. All of the masks are removed at this point, and now we're going to talk about how we're going to modify their clothes. So first things first, you can add other stamped images, guys. So her dress is totally adorable. I picked the little flower image out of the same set and I stamped that on her dress. Also, the girl on the left-hand side, I gave her, um, she's got this cute little collared dress on and I thought it would look cute if she looked like she just had like a white button down underneath it. So for her arms, I just added two, um, two little lines to give her um, a cuff at the bottom. And then I'm coloring those things white. So it's going to make her look a little bit more layered, bundled up for this particular type of season. Now, the other girl, I could have I could have given her long sleeves as well. I decided not to because I didn't want them to look too matchy-matchy. Um, but so that's something else to like, I guess, keep in mind. Also, instead of giving her pants, like you could add a belt in the middle of one of these dresses and make it like a top and a skirt combo. Um, so there's just a lot of different options. I'm not going to show you all of the things that I previously colored because this video is already very long, but I, I'm going to show you the thing, the, at least the color combinations, because the, the same idea is the same. So whether I'm coloring her legs in skin tones or I'm coloring her legs as blue jeans, which is what we're doing now, the, sa the shading goes the exact same place. I just wanted to show you how you could kind of switch up that outfit. 
Um, so I gave the one on the left blue jeans and the one on the right, like, uh, either black jeans or black tights, like leggings. And then I picked some yellows to color the um, flower in my little girl's hair and then to match the um, flowers on her dresses. Dresses. There's, I mean, there's two dresses, but she's only wearing one. What is happening with these plurals? Anywho. So most of the coloring um, is the same, but you can tell just by like switching those things up, it makes the card look or makes the characters look much different. Um, the other thing that you can do to switch up, um, and I also use it to add details. Now I've outlined all of these with my EK Success journaling pen like I always do, but um, you could use gel pens. Gel pens are amazing and I think that sometimes they don't get enough credit and it's very... Um, like just even if you just buy a white one. So I'm using a white gel pen and I'm going to add a design to her um, shirt. And then I like polka dots, stripes, really simple things. For this one, I'm doing more of like a um, like a polka dot gradient. I'm doing lots of dots at the bottom and letting them kind of disperse up the front of her shirt. I'm also going to use the white gel pen to give the girl on the right a little necklace, which is just a series of simple dots. The other thing that you can use to change up things and add detail work is metallic pens. So this is a silver one. I kind of regret doing this, honestly, because she looks like she's about to be in a rap music video because I made her necklace a little bit big, but decisions were made. So I gave her like a little heart necklace and then I did dots of silver and then just used a very thin... Um, EK Success journaling pen to kind of like give like do loops so she has a little necklace on so anyway like I said thank you so much for joining me if you want to see the full scene head over to my channel and I will catch you guys in the next video bye